you have a, a, a car and you put sand in the gas tank, how far do you think that car is going to go? The car doesn't run on sand. It runs on, on gas. Well, our body, we're putting all of this mess into the body and then wondering why we aren't living optimal lives or why we're having all these different problems. We're putting sand in our engine and expecting it to run. Professor Spira, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for having me, Alex. It is a pleasure to be here. Mm. Um, mate, how did you get into mucusless healing diet and Arnold Eric? Because for me, it was actually a bit of a long process. And when I finally came across Arnold Eric, I was like, where has this guy been? <laughs> because it was just the information, you know, it was just so like downloaded from source almost. So I'm curious to hear about how you came across that, this whole world and way of living. Yeah. So, you know, growing up, I was really sick and overweight. I had chronic migraine headaches almost every day of my life, my young life and my teenage years. I had really bad ear, nose and throat issues or I would constantly get ear infections and just be sick all the time. I was going to school with boxes of tissues, constantly blowing my nose all the time. And I thought that it was genetic because I had a really sick mother and uh, my mother died when I was when I was 12 years old. I was also partially raised by my grandmother who, who died when I was 10 years old. Uh, all of the my parents had seemed to take pills and medicine was all over the place in the bathrooms and stuff. So I thought that that was what it was, what it meant to be an adult was you have your pills and this is just how life is. Mm -hmm. And so when I started getting prescribed medications that I had to take every day, twice a day at the age of seven, you know, going for until I got into this lifestyle, I just thought that that was normal, that this is what an adult does. This is how it is. It's genetic. I'm just, just I'm sick like this and it is what it is. So but, you know, I, I was always kind of searching in the teenage years, you know, I wanted to, to lose weight and keep it off. Now I played varsity uh, football or American football and uh, played football for, uh, for six, uh, six years. And that helped me not totally balloon up because I was, I was working, working out there, but I was still, you know, I was, I was a bigger guy. I was overweight and, you know, had all these issues. Now, once I went to college when I was 18 years old, I decided to pursue, pursue music. So I went to college conservatory of music at university of Cincinnati to study uh, jazz trombone performance. And while I was there, I knew the particular type of music I wanted to learn to play jazz, which is a, a music that emerged from the streets and from the community, an art form that comes from the people that I would need to spend time outside of the school to go and immerse myself into the culture mm -hmm. to get the, the essence of this music. And so I did that. I was going to jam sessions. I was trying to find uh, spaces, particularly with jazz being, we call it like, a, you know, a black music or a black American art form coming from that experience. Those were the places that I went to find this certain kind of vibration, this special information that I could, the mentorship of these yeah, older musicians. Yeah. Yeah. And so I started to see a guy by the name of Willie Smart, AKA brother air, who's a jazz drummer, great jazz drummer. And I would just would see him at these jam sessions. There was a gentleman by the name of Chuck Young, who was a saxophone player used to be there. So I would kind of see them at jam sessions and, and exchange pleasantries and things like that there. But it was about a nine months to a year after I'd first seen him and kind of met him. I was at a place called Shea Norris. It was kind of this little jam session set up and we were on a break. And, I, and at this particular session, there was like a big buffet with all this food uh -huh. in between. And so I went, I had to, me and my friend, we filled our plates up. I had all these chicken wings and <laughs> just all this mess on the plate. 
and and I'm just eating, and I'm sitting across from uh, from Willie, from Brother Air, and he just had this look on his face, like man, I, he can't hold it back any longer. He's got to say something, and so he started telling us about the mucusless diet healing system, and slowly but surely, uh, my hand to my mouth just got slower and slower, and then I just started looking down at the plate of food, like whoa, <laughs> this is <laughs> this information he's given me is just making me not want to touch this plate. Yeah. And what that was, he, was it. I mean, what sort, what sort of things was he saying? <laughs> so what really impressed me, he had just did a year eating nothing but fruit. Right. Now oh. I have to give the disclaimer. I don't promote long fast. I don't prom- even though we do long fast and we've done periods on fruit. I don't promote that because if if your body, if you're meant to do that, when you practice the system that we'll talk about in a little bit, mucus diet healing system, your body will lead you to that if that's what you need to do. Uh, but so in his case, he'd been practicing the diet for at that time it was about 20, 20 some years, 20, almost 25 years when I met him. And so he had uh, really transitioned for, for a lot of years, the 25 years of, of cleansing himself regularly. And so he, yeah, that, that just really impressed me where, it, cause it made sense. He, it was kind of like if any organism could be refined enough to exist on only fruit, it just made sense to me that human organism could pull that off. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, it just, it's something clicked in when, he was talking about that, but so he would, you know, get into that and, and talk, uh, j- just sort of, but just the filthiness concept. Is that something we talk about? It's just the, the filthiness of the human body in general, just the, the way that we, the <laughs> cesspool of filth, exactly that we just live in. Mm-hmm. And so that it just started making sense. You know, he was talking about overcoming I- illnesses and the omnipotent, a cure for illness and disease and just this can just hitting the, I mean, he just hit us. He was just like, <laughs> and we, uh, it was after this bombs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was just truth bomb after truth bomb. And so, so after we had that talk, I, I actually did what I tell people not to do <laughs> where I, I did a, a week eating nothing but apples, right. just, please don't do that. Don't do what I did. But I just, I just wanted to see it just as an experiment. Cause I kind of think of my body. I'm more of like a, like a test, like a, my own little science experiment. And so I just was curious uh, before I read the book, not supposed to do that, but I, I just wanted to see what would happen. I'm like, am I, am I going to die? Let me just see. And I didn't, I lost a little weight, felt better. I noticed, I was like, huh, this is wow. There's something to this. So soon after that, I read the book and as you just described earlier, it's like this information is coming from source. <laughs> it's like a whole different level. And uh, it's, it's just this quality to it. And I knew when I was reading it, like, man, this is something special. I'd been into esoteric information and text. And so it, it wasn't weird for me. It didn't feel weird for me to have it. If anything, it felt like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. Right? You know, this is the kind of thing that comes to me because I'm open to it. You know, I want to read the most advanced sort of hardcore information. You know, I was kind of searching for that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, I read the book and six months after reading it, you know, that whole six months, I just started practicing uh, just doing the best that I could. And I, but I, I really keyed in on the transition concept because I understood, okay, I don't have to do this overnight. This isn't something where I have to change every little thing about how I eat just because I read this book. It's like, there's, there's a method in a way to transition. So I was kind of picking up on that mm-hmm. and, uh, and I it started going over to brother Ayers house a little bit. And he was, I was seeing how he would prepare food for his family and so I was kind of taking all that in, asking a lot of questions. And so with that, it was been about six months. I'd lost about a hundred pounds, wow. started over, overcoming all these ailments that I had just had, uh, these allergies and back pain was going away. We got rid of the CPAP unit. They had said that I had sleep apnea. So I was using this 
thing to put oxygen in my nose at night. Mm-hmm. Just all that, the pharmaceutical medications threw that away. It was just mm-hmm. I was done. And it just felt so good to be free of all that, just totally emancipated and like, all right, this is this this is real. And when I lost the weight, it happened so naturally and gradually that there were some people that saw me every day at school. One of my teachers in particular, my trombone teacher, that he didn't even realize that I'd really lost weight until somebody said something to him. And then he he all of a sudden was like did you lose weight? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you've been seeing me for the past. You haven't seen, I've been looking a little different. And, um, and uh, so then after that, it, that, it was one of those things as I got deeper into is that one of the beautiful things about the mucus diet healing system book is every time you read it, you get more from it. There's just a deeper understanding, certain things that you might not have picked up on that. Now you get it because you have different experience now. And I kind of got that. And so I started just sort of reading the book over and over again. And every time I read it, it was just getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. And I started to notice that I I had an ability to explain it well to people. And, you know, early on, you want to kind of tell everybody and then you sort of learn, you get beat up a little bit and then you learn, okay, I got to have a little strategy to this and get it <laughs> yeah. go around, you know, just, just getting beat up all the time trying to talk about this. So, but I did notice there uh, that I was learning how to better explain this just to any, like walking up to somebody on the street that I'll have, that doesn't have any background. It's like, I could break things down in a way where they would at least understand it, remember it. And I might be able to, put that drop that little seed in their head. So because I kind of had this goal of whenever it's inevitable that they will go through, we call it elimination instead of being sick. Mm-hmm. It's an it's inevitable they're going to go through an elimination sooner or later. Mm-hmm. So I want to kind of implant my face in their head so that when they <laughs> you know it's like a like a hypnotherapy that you know so <laughs> when they start blowing their nose and coughing up mucus, they're going to remember me in our conversation <laughs> and that worked because i would get phone calls like from people that were really not interested when we were talking about it like ah man that's extreme i don't want to hear about it then all of a sudden they give a call hey what was that thing you were talking about and you know blazer like blowing her nose and coughing yeah, up phlegm yeah, yeah. and so so that's where i started to get into kind of re- realizing my my calling yeah i was i was like you know, because I it, in the midst of fasting, as I got into fasting, changing my diet up, and with within the context of fasting, I started really it, it was like speeding up my my development, my spiritual development, or just my ability to perceive and understand and be open. It's like Brother Air says, if you want to be filled with the knowledge and the wisdom and the powers of the universe, you got to be empty first and clean, you know, cleansed, clean yourself out. And so I did that. And then I started just getting this kind of understanding, like, okay, I have a job to do. I have some work to do to bring this information to the masses. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. And I'm actually doing some of this work earlier than in my head. I thought I'd be doing this like in my sixties and seventies, I'd be a musician but to tour around the world as a musician for you know 20, 30 years, and then kind of like, okay, I'm now now it's time to go talk diet. <laughs> but the universe, you know, has different plans. And so it's like, no, you're gonna flip that around. People need to hear about the diet now, and then you have to you can get into your music later. And that's what's happening now. You know, we have a band uh, happening. But um, but yeah, so that it it started to become clear what my mission was and what mm. I, what I could bring to the table, how I could just bring awareness, bring a certain level of, of analysis and understanding to, uh, to this area be in. So I created an annotated version of the original mucus's diet, not to create something as like, ah, this is the one you know, everybody has to have. I'm, I'm, the type of person that's like read all the versions you can get your hand on uh, hands on because you can see the differences in all of them. But a lot of people say they like mine, particularly because I do address questions that most average people have. 
because the original book was written circa 1920. And so there are references and people that Eric brings up that the average person, unless you sit down with Google and every time you see something that you don't understand, you Google it, then it's going to kind of go over your head. And even then, like you need a little deeper research on some of the names of the people uh, that he drops. Uh, So I was like, well, I'll just make, you know, every great book, whether, you know, religious text or literature, you know, every great book has some kind of annotated version of it where somebody posthumously has come and filled in the blanks and did some analysis. And I was like, okay, well, if any book deserves that, the mucus has died healing system deserves an addition like that. So, so I created that and then just really just made an effort to try to put Eric's message out here just in a, in a bigger way. You know, we never had any illusions of like coming out here and all of a sudden being the most popular folks around or that kind of, I mean, this isn't that type of thing. This is just like a slow, a slow burn, you know, where we're getting people into it. Cause a lot of, uh, you do have to be ready for it. You, you gotta be open. Uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people wait until they're really sick to, to, and then that opens them up. And so, then they come and check out the book. And sometimes it's a little too late. I always try to get people well, check this out now, like check it out. <laughs> like don't wait until, uh, until you're really sick. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, but that's kind of how I got into it and then got inspired to want to really share this information with, mm. with the people of the world. Uh, it's epic, man. And I've read your uh, version of the book and it's it's great. I uh, did a 21 day fast a couple months ago and I was reading it during That's, that. And yeah, it was yeah. just like being downloaded in, you know, it yeah, was, it was yeah, a beautiful yeah. thing. Um, when did you start incorporating fasts and how do you incorporate fasts? What length and how, like what sort of protocols do you do? We do? Mm. So my my approach to fasting, I really like Eric's methodologies where instead of setting a particular and I know a lot of people do this. So it's just but my thing is instead of setting a particular length goal and then trying to put my pressure on myself, like, OK, I got to get this 10 days or I got to get this amount. I take it a day at a time and I read my body, the cues for my body. Uh, and uh, that's fortified by the knowledge and the information that is in rational fasting as well as mucus diet healing system. So I can read the cues. I, I know it's OK. My body's going through. I better not break my fast now because it's I'm starting to kind of start another elimination cycle. Let me just let that roll or you get to a point where the last elim- elimination cycle is really harsh. I'm going to break it now, you know, yeah. once I'm done with that elimination cycle, I'm breaking it this time. Yeah. And uh, so, so for me, it's more of a, a day by day kind of thing when, when I get into it and I'm reading my body and also I've taught myself anytime I start to go through any kind of elimination immediately um, doing a lemon juice uh, enema. We do lemon juice and distilled water enemas. I'm doing one of those and I'm fasting. Mm. No, no ifs, ands, or buts, no thinking of it. It's like, so, and I've, I've just ingrained that in myself. And so that's a way that my body tells me that it's time to fast. It's like, okay, if there it happens very rarely, uh, when I do go through eliminations now, but early on when I started, I, I had a lot of ways to get out. And so that would happen more frequently where, uh, where it's not a bad thing, you know, people, because it's uncomfortable and we're in a, a society in a situation where they have all these drugs that you can take and suppress, which is like the worst thing that you could do for these eliminations, but it's normal where cough suppressant you, you or the stuff that dries you up and, and this kind of stuff. And it's like, if, so for the first time when I got into this diet, I was actually letting my body, totally eliminate and with it well unencumbered and when i would get cold and flu like symptoms and the fever and all that kind of stuff and i'm like okay i'm just i'm fasting just either drink, drinking juices or the water lemon water or whatever and that 
I, I just noticed how, okay, there's, it's uncomfortable. There's a lot of stuff coming out, but I could feel the cleansing process happening where it's like, okay, yeah, well, this is actually, this is really working. And it's exactly how Eric talks about it in the book in terms of the elimination process. So I was trying to get people ready for that, that, yeah, when you get into this thing in the beginning, depending on where you're coming from, you're probably going to go through periods of elimination. So don't be scared of it or think that you're better than it, <laughs> that you just <laughs> Go through it, get rid of that stuff. And believe me, it's finite. There is like that does not happen. There's a, a certain point where that almost never happens. You know, it's very rare. And uh, but yeah, but, yeah I, always, that's kinda... I always say to people like when they're having a, a symptom come up during a fast or even if they're eating more cleanly, like smile. And, and enjoy yeah. it if you can. Yeah, exactly. That's the process. That means your body is actually cleansing and healing and, and, and eliminating, as you said. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a beautiful thing that we have because there's some people that have weak thyroids and endocrine systems that they, they would love the ability to have a fever. I mean, it's very hard for their body to generate that when it needs it. And so it's, yeah, be thankful. <laughs> you just smile. And, uh, and, you know, I have this concept of physiological karma that just all, I, it helped me along the way, just understand and put into perspective what I'm going through, where if I start feeling sorry for myself or I start, maybe I'm, you know, I look over at a party and you know, I used to, cause I was in college, when I started this diet and I just remember a couple of times where, you know, cause I stopped, stopped going to the, the, the parties where everybody's getting drunk. I'd stop going to like clubs and restaurants and all this stuff. And so I was, I got out of my car and I'm walking back to the dorm and it's like a Friday night. And I look over and it's just a, it's a big old house party with they, you know, just everybody screaming and girls over there dancing, that kind of stuff. And, and I remember just feeling like, you know, just really like, dang, is you know, I'm, I'm, you know, that, that dilemma of I used to do that like just a year ago or just six months right. ago, I would have been right up in there and partying and that kind of stuff. But then on the other hand, I was starting to develop the understanding of where it's like, but what, what was that really fun? Was that really to to be in, in that environment, this, you know, po poison, poisoning the body and um you know, that, that whole, that, so it was like kind of like the dilemma to people where it's like yeah. uncomfortable and like trying to fit in and all that kind of nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Just that whole, you know, just, just that whole scene. And so it, it's, I started to really understand the, the heaviness of what I'm trying to do mm. because on the social side, it's like diametrically opposed to everything in the society. And mind you, this is 2002. And so like today it's bad. It's a little easier because veganism isn't like a cuss word or yeah. you know, people. <laughs> there's more people that just uh, that understand and kind of accept and respect the plant based type of thing. But right. back then that that hadn't happened yet. And so. Uh, so, yeah, so it was just just a, you know, that that's and so that becomes something that everybody has to kind of understand that this is the, the social piece. And, but I made a pact with myself that I wasn't going to let the social social elements hold me down or cause me to eat improperly. Like I wasn't going to blame that because I noticed a lot of other people that would try to go down this path, they would blame eating poorly on, well, you know, I did really good, but yeah, I went to this wedding and or my friends asked me to go to the restaurant, and, you know, and they, whatever that excuse. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to let myself have that excuse when I eat poorly. It's going as much as I can. It's going to be based on my own addiction to pus and mucus forming foods, which I know is still there. And so I'm just going to work on cleansing that out so that I, I no longer have the craving and the taste for those items. And so that's what I did. So I took myself out of a lot of social situations that would lead to me falling off the wagon and eating things that I didn't need to eat. 
and uh, and just got real disciplined and focused and just said, OK, we're this. This is the path. And it went hand in hand with with what I was trying to accomplish as an artist, as a musical artist and musician. You already are living a monastic lifestyle where you're going off and practicing eight, nine, ten hours a day, trying to learn this really hard craft. And so, so yeah, so I, I just kind of really melded into that where, so, OK, I'm just trying to become the one of the best musicians on the planet, take this diet as far as I can clean myself up and then kind of see what happens there, you know, going to see what the, what the result of that is. Dude, I want to, I want to talk about, um, I'd love to hear your explanation on, you know, how disease is kind of all (laughs) based around, you know, mucus within the body. But before we get there, how did your musicianship and your understanding of music and your ability to improv during a jazz mm. jam, like how did that change as you started to clean up mm. what you were putting in your body? I'm curious. Yeah, that's a great question because I immediately started to notice positive uh, effects from practicing the diet in my, in my art and the music, the clarity, because the, the clarity of thought was there started to increase the uh you know i was breathing better so i was able to to breathe in and you know put the uh put with an wind instrument uh creativity was just kind of unleashed and uh, as it and my ability to study uh greatly improved so i was able to begin to really take in a lot of information and process a lot of information at one time and I'd always wanted to do that. And I had studied things before the diet that were these different kinds of study, you know, mind, mind mapping and right. yeah. photo reading yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And but when I actually got into the diet and I started clearing out all this waste in my head and was able to, to breathe and think clearly, I was able to revisit some of those things. And they, it was like they turned on. And so like fo- some like photo reading, I, I just I went back to that and checked it out and it was like, boom, I got it. And so I was able to just start going through a ton of information and retain uh, and retain things. So uh, is photo and- reading like where you look at a page and you take a mental snapshot of it and then you can read the words? Is that what photo I mean? That's I mean, kind of. But there's really there's an there's a system to it. So it's really they could call it, I don't know, like the photo reading system, Mm -hmm. but you go through it's like if you do the whole thing, it's like like four or five steps. But what most people end up doing is there there's like two steps that that generally is for most people in the in the reading that we have to do is it's really all you need is just that the speed reading that just comes from the general Mm-hmm. from a couple of those steps but it's basically if you ever study just regular speed reading you go through things similar to that so but there is there's an active process where as you're reading first you want to kind of you, you inspect everything and you and there's more of a kind of a spiritual connection with this text mm-hmm. uh in this book that's in front of you but then you always want to have questions and so there's certain questions just based on you know, looking at the tape contents or the or if you know what's in the book, you sort of you come at it with these questions. Then there is a uh, then there's kind of a mind mapping part where you, you can kind of gl- glance through the book a little bit and maybe put those questions and some things on the on the mind map. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there is a part where you essentially photograph the entire book with your mind and you, you just page through the entire thing, mm-hmm. make sure that you're seeing the whole page, they kind of have detailed description on really how to do it so that you're getting the full periphery of your eyes and seeing everything, but you page through the whole thing. Then you go back and you do essentially like a speed reading, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. more, more traditional speed reading process. I think they called it something like Superman, uh, super like Superman process or something, uh, with you as you're going through it. And, and so, yeah. So then as you're doing that, you're, you're answering these questions, you know, you, with these questions in your mind that helps you really retain things and sort through things because you've already fo- subconsciously photographed it. So as you're going through it, 
you can really, and it really this works, but you, you, you're going through it. You can speed through this whole thing and, and key in on parts that, that you are really, you know, that, that's really for you that you're looking for and to, that, the kind of information that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so as a researcher and somebody that reads as a, you know, as a re- I read more as a researcher, in that type of style. So that was kind of perfect for me. Mm. And so, yeah, so I started going through a ton of books. I used to watch like five to 10 documentaries a day. Oh I'd God. go to the library and that was, they still had some v- v- VHSs and DVDs. There was still VHSs <laughs> there. I still had the, v- the VCR. And uh, so I'd go to the library. I got all these documentaries on all kinds of different topics. And so I would be sitting practicing my trombone on some of the things that I don't have to focus on the things that are more muscle memory. So I could sit there and just work on the muscle memory things mm-hmm. and be just sort of watching some kind of educational documentary. And I could, I could just get this so. visual of you just like with your trombone, like doing muscle memory stuff. And then you just like got the download of this yeah. thing coming in, just like in the zone, you know? Yeah. I, I loved it. I loved that period. That period yeah. of time was, was great. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. That, that really resonates with me. Like what you were saying about reading. I remember after doing my first long fast and starting to eat fruits, like just the way that the information came in was really elevated to what I'd experienced before. And I just seemed yeah. to be able to fly through books and um, yeah, that's really cool. All right. Yeah. I just, I haven't been playing my guitar as much recently, but I'm just, I, I could just see you just jamming out and going through all the different, modes and scales and things and just like channeling it in with this clarity that comes with eating this way yeah you know? um, yeah yeah mm, no it's cool and we um, and we created a band called the uh the, the breatharian ensemble <laughs> and uh which you know that that it's the name of a band you know people get all real worked up about about the net breatharian let's talk about that it's just like just <laughs> chill out read the mucus die book and you'll see we're talking about you know the air gas engine principle like understand that first but um but that we had found is we it started off as an as a sort of another band concept but we kept after some gigs we kept rehearsing and we noticed that everybody that was left in the band was all vegetarian or practicing the mucus's diet. So it was like, wait a minute, we have an all vegetarian band Hmm. and we, you know, we're, we're jazz musicians and we're into stuff that's more, you know, like I love free jazz and avant-garde and that kind of stuff. And so we're big into like Sun Ra and Ornette Coleman and the late John Coltrane stuff. And, and so we at Art Ensemble Chicago, and so we, with that band concept, it started to develop into what what it became. Where you know we coming out with the, got the face paint and the garb on, and and it's really like this. Uh, for us, it's like it's like church. You know, it's like this mm-hmm. kind of spiritual experience, uh, which to me is really what the whole musical, the the real deep artistry of the music is supposed to be about. Anyway, is you know connecting into that that part uh, what ends up happening with the, in our society, you know, the stimulated pus and mucus based society mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, a lot of what people refer to as music gets relegated to the, uh, the, the mating rituals and all the, you know, and, and sort of base level kind of stuff, yeah. which is always, that's always been a tradition there. You always have that music there historically, but where it, when it's just, predominant <laughs> where you know you turn on a radio and it's it's either about uh you know m- money sex what you know just like these handful of things mm. then it's kind of like all right we we see where we're at whereas when you're getting into something like john coltrane where this was transcendental music where we're you know trying to tr- really connect with the essence of the creator or something like sun Ra, where this is, uh, you know, a, a, a con- just a, <laughs> you know, a consciousness about the, the, the about space and mm. just just a whole different you know future that whole Afrofuturism, which really was championed by Sun Ra. You know, it was made famous by Parliament Funkadelic and 
earth, wind and fire and a lot of, you know, those kind of guys, but that all started with Sun Ra. Most people don't know that. Right. But, um, so we was into all that. And so that, so it was just like, that was the music that we were playing. And, just, and, and then we started seeing folks in the band would be fasting and we started playing, uh, performances whenever we perform, we, most of the members in the band would actually fast to get ready for the performance. And so when we go out there on stage and you have a band of people that's fasting, that, that energy and that vibration is just totally different. That and is so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so cool, that man. was, yeah. So that was, yeah. So that was great. Uh, you know, a great, just a great period. And we, I think look f- fondly back on that period uh, mm-hmm. of time. Cause we j- just, I just remember doing, it was a, a gig sometimes we, there. We were at a, uh, uh, it was like a festival thing outside of a baseball foot. We were in between a big baseball field and football field, like the big stadium of professional uh, teams. Right. And yeah. I was on stage <laughs> within the context of the music i was t- basically telling people to to stop eat you know to just like stop eating the crap <laughs> and the people were just walking by with like ice cream just looking at me with their mouth was just like <laughs> they were not expecting to see that that day and uh so it was so that was really one of the first places within the context of the music and the art that was where i really started to share this information to it through that context. Uh, so it, you know, c- comes across a little more esoteric in, in that way. But in that time, it was that shock and awe is really what was needed to get most people's attention because it was just nothing, nothing out there about any of this. And so we was just kind of like, we would hit people hard and they would like, Whoa, just kind of, kind of wake them up a little bit. And, um, yeah, I love it. That'll happen at at a baseball pitch, man. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Those hot dogs are causing mucus and pus. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. It just, especially in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is just known for pork. It's nickname is Porkopolis. So it's just (laughs) known for its, its gluttony and, and so it was, yeah, those were, those were interesting times. <laughs> so let's go there. Let's talk about some pus and some mucus and some gluttony. Um, can you explain a little bit more about kind of what happens when we do eat these mucus forming foods and how that leads into these greater chronic diseases that we experience? So pus and mucus forming foods, the so pus, when we use that term, we're referring to uh, animal products with the the meat, dairy, things that degrade down into a very uh, concentrated form of mucus that we're calling pus. So it's not necessarily the medical definition of like where it's infected. I mean, it will be sooner or later if it sits there long enough, but it's just this very concentrated, really nasty stuff. And if you take a piece of meat and you just let it decay down, it's going to turn into this really nasty slime. Uh, and so that's the pus. And the mucus is the plant-based thing, the starchy stuff, the fat, fatty things. Those are going to be your mucus. Not all mucus forming foods are created equally. There are certain mucus forming foods that you will continue to eat that are better to eat for transitional purposes than other things. And that's where you consult the mucus diet book and you can see, like, okay, here's something that I should probably get off of as soon as I can. Here's something else that eventually I want to get off of it, but it's not as dangerous to my body. So what happens is you eat. We, we put all these different mixtures together. That's wrong. We drink while we're eating. Oftentimes, that's not good. All these things impede the body in being able to properly digest and function and absorb and do what it needs to do with this uh, food. And we come from a perspective of the reason that we eat is for elimination purposes. So that's what we're really focused on. Most people are focused on a lot of nutritional theories that we find to be problematic. Uh, We're looking at when when I'm eating a fruit or a vegetable, 
I'm really interested in its ability to cleanse my blood, cleanse my GI tract and my colon, not leave behind residue of mucus. So when you eat mucus forming foods or pus forming foods, your body is not able to totally eliminate all of it. It'll eliminate a little bit of it, hopefully, uh, at some point, because most people, we got 32 feet of intestines. Most of us have 32 feet of impacted intestines, and they're impacted with uneliminated, unnatural food substances. You're uneliminated. Uh, remember when people used to say, you know, if you eat, if you swallow gum, it would take seven years to get out of your system. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. And so people are eating stuff, maybe not as that turns into gum inside the body. You know, things like the, the rice, they, it, rice is a, is a great glue that people then would say, well, but we have stomach acid that breaks it all down. Not all of it will break some of it, but over time, the, 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 the sticky residue that remains uneliminated starts to get on the walls of the intestines from childhood. And so over time, if you never clean that out, you never, uh, you continue to eat this food as very in the acid forming that becomes acid forming as it, it when it's just sitting in there, putrefying, fermenting, uh, when you don't ever eliminate that stuff, then the body, it just tries to do its best to protect the vital organs. And so any number of whatever you name the diseases and the, you know, whether, you know, if it's some inflammation in this part of the body or some kind of growth over here, the body is trying to protect itself from all this waste, all this, this toxic mess. That's just because we don't know how to eat and we don't know how to clean ourselves out. Uh, I did a video where I do this analysis of a, some of you did a colonoscopy video and, and you could see this slime is a lot of people. We have this word called mucoid plaque that we like to talk about. And people want to say that it's not real or it's fake. And I'm like, okay, but it's, <laughs> you, you will see it. I guarantee you, you will start to see this stuff. If you really start to go down this path and practice this kind of cleansing. And I got a video where you can see it on people. They're, had these case studies of folks that had like cancers and this kind of stuff. And you could see the black tar slime on the walls of the intestine. And that's the, that is the stuff that you are getting out when you start to eat the broom salads, when you're eating the fruit in the right order, in the right way, you're doing lemon juice enemas, you know, when you're just cleaning yourself out, that is part of what you're cleaning. And there's no other way because there's not a, a fa not not a quick fix. Uh, we don't promote these those real those kind of real harsh uh, purgatives where you you know take some something that's really harsh. It's like uh, like no, you got to this therapeutic process. You know, a, a little water and lemon juice and your colons not not a big deal. Uh, and and you just start to really get get this stuff out of your system. And as you do. That's when all of a sudden it's like a big weight is lifted off of your head where it's just, like, oh, wow, I can, I can I can think you start to think different. Your blood is being uh, uh, oxygenated properly. You know, it's not being poisoned every time it goes around your system. And and so uh, so that's that's the key. So, you know, as Zara says uh, in the mucus's diet healing system book, you know, all. Uh, every disease, no matter what name it is known by medical science, is constipation, a clogging up of the entire pipe system of the human body. So we're not just talking about bowel constipation, but cellular constipation from head to toe. We have broken the laws of the universe to the point where we have all, just so much chronic illness that we, we, that we shouldn't even know exists. But the body is constantly trying to find a way to keep us alive a little bit longer. But what if we get in line with nature's laws and stop trying to fight against it and say, let's, let's just get in line and let's, let's see how far we can go <laughs> down that path. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And so what you're saying really is like, no matter what the symptom may be, whether it's migraines or chronic headaches or, 
arthritis or cancer or constipation or IBS, SIBO, whatever is going on for you, acne, all these things are all uh, just a different way that that particular individual's body is trying to eliminate this buildup of mucus and pus within the body. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. I feel like that's a pretty groundbreaking thing for people to realize. <laughs> like that's why, yeah, why, why isn't been, that being talked about? <laughs> yeah, I, that's, my, that's been my question for years, but it, cause you, you start to see it for when you lo- start looking at the body through the lens of elimination, you start to realize how your body is an elimination machine. It's constantly, you know, if you're, when your kidneys are filtering properly, your, your urine should, you know, can be a little cloudy when you're fasting or not smell good. you when you're really getting that stuff out of there, but you have your kidneys, colon and your skin. That's the main avenues of elimination. Uh, then if, if you're really encumbered, then, you know, you'll get eye crusty. I mean, I used when I was little, I used to wake up and my eyes would be crusted shut. God. So there's that. You can look. You can look that up on Google and see pictures of people that have that. That what I had growing up. Uh, so and, you know, earwax and no, you know. So there's, you know, but every everything in the body is trying to eliminate that which it does not need. Mm. And so that is that is the paradigm shift. It's a total, just different way to look at the body. That's not based in, we call it the additive principle where you, this preoccupation with, well, I need, I need to have all, all this, like these certain uh, nutrients and this and that, and this kind of stuff. And it's kind of like, we, we just look at things from an elimination perspective where like you said, no, no matter what the issue is at the foundation of it, you can guarantee there's a filthy colon. You start there, start cleaning that out, start, cleaning out uh, what you're eating, getting away from the acid forming foods, the the foods that that all mucus forming foods eventually become acid forming, if not fully eliminated Mm. and acid in the body. That's what promotes the, uh, the damage, damage cells, the, the, the C word uh, that people use, uh, you know, all this, it's all connected. And one of the things from coming from true naturopathy, uh, which, you know, Arnold Eric was really the cornerstone of true naturopathy. Uh, you start to see things from that holistic perspective. Everything is connected. Your tongue and your throat make up one long tube that goes all the way down to your colon and your anus. It's one long tube. In Western med- medical conception of the body, everything's divided up. You know, as well, the tongue, the tongue's not really related to the colon and the, you know, your throat. And, it, and they cut everything up. And then they have people that specialize in the different systems and the different parts of the body. And then they get. And everybody, it seems, to specialize in in an area, think that their area is the most important and is the best. And this is so vital as opposed to having a holistic approach, seeing how all of these systems work together and seeing how acidosis throughout the body, the uneliminated toxic waste, obstructive foods, when you have eat foods that don't eliminate well and back up in the system, how that stops the, the energy flow. So you because you can use different paradigms. You can do a, you know, if you're using an energy paradigm, or if you're using more of a Western physical body paradigm, doesn't matter. Arnold Eric came up with this brilliant equation called vitality equals power minus obstruction. What that means is once you remove all of the obstruction, then the body can power itself as it was intended. And it's kind of this concept of a perpetual motion air gas engine idea. Uh, but that's something to think about. The, the Aaron says that the body is an air gas engine. How far do you, th- if you have a, a, a car 
and you put sand in the gas tank, how far do you think that car is going to go? The car doesn't run on sand. It runs on, on gas. Well, our body, we're putting all of this mess into the body and then wondering why we aren't living optimal lives or why we're having all these different problems. We're putting sand in our engine and expecting it to run. The body, first and foremost, is an air gas engine that exists on air alone. And if you don't believe that, just think about it. You can go five minutes without air. Uh, or what, No, you can't go five minutes without air, but you can go a few days without food. You know, people know that, that you, but you can't go too long without breathing. And so that's the most important. Now, if you don't want brain damage and don't try that where some people are like, oh, I can do more than five minutes. You may. OK, <laughs> but. You know, the point is that that th this really is a serious paradigm shift. And so the idea is once you remove all the obstruction, vitality equals power minus obstruction, vitality equals power. Is, is already is like the constant in the equation. Obstruction, as soon as there's more obstruction or too much obstruction that inhibits the body's, the, the power, the, the body's ability to get the oxygen that it needs through the breathing process, to clean the blood, to keep everything moving properly, then the body comes to a standstill and that's it. And so the removal of obstruction is, is key, you know, is paramount. And just by living and because the, the breathing process is a cleansing process. Every time you breathe, you are cleansing your blood, you're cleansing your body. And the cleaner you get, the more every breath can really fulfill its obligation and it's duty. You, you're giving it an opportunity to actually do what it's supposed to do. Uh, but when you fill yourself up with all these mixtures and the burgers and the pizza and dairy and all this kind of stuff, it causes that obstruction. And sooner or later, it's going to destroy the body. I imagine there's some people listening right now who are feeling a bit guilty <laughs> about some foods that they've been eating recently how because what you shared was just it's it's kind of heavy in a way for some people because it's such a departure from what they've been taught or known mm. how do you how do you kind of get how do you get started how do you start to remove some of the obstructions like how do you begin like and, and also in terms of the social aspect as well, like you said, because that's a really important piece. Sometimes the most challenging piece for people is telling people mm. that they're trying to clean up their diet because it separates them from others. How do you kind of get started on, on the journey to start to remove some of this obstruction and feel that high level of vitality? So first and foremost, I say you got to read the book. You don't have to read my versions, but get a copy of the Mucus of Diet Healing read, System read book. Your version. Yeah, yeah, everybody. <laughs> but just paramount, you know, get get the Mucus of Diet Healing System book and really read it because it, it there's just things that we can't go over in a discussion yeah. and, and little tidbits that's in there. And you'll see what we're talking about when you check it out. That, that just that gives you this this level of understanding that you can't get from just sort of listening to, to people talk about it. So first and foremost, you know, read the Mucus Diet Healing System book and do it with an open mind. Come at it with the open mind. Just think about, okay, just whatever your beliefs are, just understand they're probably going to be challenged and just sort of go on that journey. There's parts of it that you, if you need to think about it, like, uh, like a ph philosophy, a bit, uh, there's some things that are kind of philosophical in nature and controversial philosophies. And so, you just just kind of go on that journey and understand that you don't have to agree with all of the philosophies in order to benefit from the transitional methodology, the, the lessons, lesson 15, 16 and 17 on transition dieting, uh, very important sections there. And, uh, and so that's sort of the next piece. Once you read the book, then go back to those lessons on the transition diet 
and uh, you you can create uh, like a shopping list and kind of get you know start to okay here here's some things there's, there's some recipes in there there's sort of a, a course of action that you could get into and uh, and, and just start going you know go, going with that mm. and uh, you know get get those foods you know kind of you, know, you, you just got to kind of get into it because the main thing is going to the store, getting what you need at the store and, uh, and, and then just executing. Mm. And, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's beautiful. And, you know, if I was to add my two cents worth as well, I mean, it's an opportunity to experience life and being and beingness mm. in a way that, you perhaps never have before and there'll be moments of challenge uh as you start to eliminate <laughs> right not symptoms but just elimination right yeah um, and that can be hard but what's on the other side of that when you start to eat this way is the most truly magical spiritual understanding of life and being here on this planet it's it's I don't know. I, you can't really put words on it. You know, I, I used to always say like, it's like the veil gets taken up and mm. you finally realize like, Oh, this is what my experience can be like. Right. You know? I'd just gone 25 years not feeling this way. And now I feel incredible and more connected with others and connected with myself and spirit and my soul. And I can, speed read you know and I yeah yeah download yeah. and you know so that is kind of what's on offer here you know and um i'm I, I would just say to people give it a crack and see how you go yeah and and with the social dynamic i i just was hardcore about that but part of my mission has been to create more of a support system and a community around this lifestyle to to help because i know that not everybody can do what i did or what brother air did we're very self-motivated very much kind of you know i'm kind of a loner by by nature and so uh and, and it's just an attitude there's a certain kind of as we like to say practicing this diet is the most revolutionary thing that you can do because the most revolutionary thing that you can do right now is to control what you put into your body and with the mu with the mucus's diet, that is training on on learning how to do that from wherever you are, however bad you eat. There's nobody watching this it probably eats worse than I used to eat when I started <laughs> practicing the diet. So I used to go by my famous meal was two foot longs with chili and cheese, a cheeseburger, a root beer, a root beer floating popcorn at a root beer stand. And I'd go there a couple times a week. Man, in the, man. when they were open, and so I, that was just straight gluttony. There's no reason to eat that much, but that that's what that's what I was into was just eating a lot of food uh, and a lot of bad food. And so, if I, if I can transition uh, away from that, then uh, then anybody physically can. But I will say that the only thing I felt like was was a bit of an advantage was just my attitude, where. I just kind of was like, you know what? I don't care if I don't fit in. I'm going to be who I am. I mean, that was when I first really started feeling like who I truly was, where I wasn't trying to fit in to their whatever it is, the, the society stuff. And, you know, I, that's when I started growing my hair out and I stopped shaving, you know, and all this, that kind of stuff. It was just, but it was a result of the physiological work I was doing. It wasn't, really a philosophical type of thing. Like, okay, I'm going natural. It was just like, no, as I started to change my body, it didn't make sense to, to shave anymore. Yeah. I remember the last time I ever actually shaved, sometimes I might trim just a little, but the last time I actually shaved, I remember within two hours, I could feel the, the, like the, the whiskers coming back in or the beard. And I was like, and it's uncomfortable. I'm like, why am I doing this? I'm done. You know, and I stopped, I just stopped because I was like, this doesn't make any sense for me, you know? And, uh, but that's, but that's just me, you know, brother air. He, he, 
uh, still, I think he's still kind of, he does some kind of shaving or some kind of thing, you know? Mm. So, so it's just physiological. Everybody kind of finds their own, their own groove uh, with that. Yeah. And, I think um, if we were to get a bit esoteric, you know, I, I, I feel like as you, you do kind of take that power back by eating this way because you say, yeah. no, actually the, like the way of, of living almost that I've been brought up in is actually not, fit for my optimal human health and so you kind of take that power back and um and and through doing that it's almost as if you kind of unplug yourself from the matrix a little bit you know in 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 all these areas and you start to question like why am i doing why do i do this in this certain way or why do i feel that about that certain thing it's like oh because the culture that i was brought up in has actually programmed me to do that it's not actually in alignment with who i am right um, and exactly. so I think you start to eat more cleanly, you take your power back and then you, you start to, I guess, not even question, but you just start to do things differently. Um, and coming from a place of who you are, not who you're pretending to be based on, you know, what society says you should do or should be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really that, that journey into yourself and your authentic self, like who are you really that? is a big part of this journey. Sometimes we it, it's because it is, yeah, a little more of an esoteric kind of discussion, but that know thyself principle. I mean, that you really are forced to get into that on this path because you will be challenged in ways that you could, couldn't have imagined. It's going to be different than what you thought. So you'd be like, okay, all I got to do is just, not be hungry and just use willpower to this. Like, no, you, you will, you will have dreams. Like what you, is your, cause you're literally breaking away and, and, and breaking chains and, and you can't, you got to understand that that's profound and it's not going to be a walk in the park. And, uh, and I was just talking today with, with somebody who was talking about some dreams that they were, ha- that they had had. And I remembered when I started practicing the diet and I was just, I was getting to the point where I was getting off of eating meat and, and dairy. And I had a dream and I had gone the period of time without it. And so I was kind of proud of that. And I had a dream where somebody literally tricked me into eating. So they told me it was a vegetarian chili and I ate it in the dream. And then they started laughing and they told me that like, ah, he's just lying. It's got meat in it. And I just remember the experience that I had. It was like uh, just anxiety and all just all this in my stomach. Cause I, like I had failed and I, I cause I'd got so far and I was trying so hard and then I, like, I just totally failed. And then I woke up and, you know, and I, and it was felt like I, that happened, you know, <laughs> like yeah, that really yeah. happened is that all those emotions were there from that experience. But that was showing me just the progress where it's like, okay, this is the last hurrah that this stuff is having in my body. It's, it's trying to, to not let me go. It wants to, it wants to hold on, doesn't want me to kick the habit. And, uh, but I just, I saw what was going on at that point. I was like, oh, okay, I see this is, this is leaving. Cause you, you tend to feel that when you're removing certain waste or obstructions, you will experience oftentimes experience whatever the side effects were supposed to be. If you didn't experience the side effects when you took the drug or you ate the food, then you'll, you might experience it when it's leaving. Mm. And, uh, and that, cause I went through some eliminations uh, at one point along my journey where I was like, man, these, this is different. This is a different kind of, and I was wondering, this feels like, like side effects that from some of those drugs that I used to take mm. growing up. And sure enough, I went online and looked up side effects for, mm. uh, you know, Seldane and Allegra and Claritin and all these different things that I had taken over the years. And I was experiencing every one of those side effects. Mm. And I was like, all right. This is where I'm at because that stuff gets stored in the tissue system that it doesn't doesn't eliminate properly until you actually go through a cleansing or a detox process. And, and then you got to be careful. That's one thing with folks. If you took some like hard drugs or some really uh, neurotoxic kind of stuff, you, you do want to be a little more gentle and measured with your with your elimination process and, and all that that you know, gets into, it gets deeper into that, that thing. But, um, but yeah, 
Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a journey into, into yourself and really looking in the mirror and being honest with yourself. Look where, where this is who I am. This is where I'm at. And, you know, going from there. Professor Spira, this has been epic. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for everything you've had to share. Um, I feel like that was a good, good place to end, looking in the mirror, right? Easier yeah. said than done sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, um, yeah, life, huh? So if people want to find out more about you, if people, well, first of all, if people want to hear your music, uh, but also if people want to, um, buy, buy the book and learn more about you? Where can they do that? How can they find you? So uh, main places I would tell folks to go, go to mucusfreelife.com. The mucusfreelife.com, you can kind of navigate from there. We got the store with the book bundles and some of our music is on there uh, and, and that kind of thing. If you're interested in the band the itself, you can check out firemusicproject.com. And uh, that'll forward you to firemusicprojectlive.com and uh, you can get caught up with the band. And we're going to, I'm going to start putting out some new content uh, for the band. Also find us on Facebook at Fire Music Project uh, on Facebook. And uh, we're going to start posting up a lot more stuff in the near future. And uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, uh, prof.spira on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I try to post up a lot of, <laughs> you know, that I, I get inspired to do uh, a certain kind of post on there. And so I post different things there than anywhere else. And so it's a good, uh, good place to follow me, especially to, to hear about the, my opinions on COVID-19 and all of the, <laughs> uh, all of that good stuff. I, I put, put that out there, but, um, but yeah, but you can find me at moviesfreelife.com. All the books are on, on Amazon. If you type in Professor Spira on Amazon, you can find them that way or get them directly from us on our website. Uh, and we have a few other things that you can find. You've got an e-course on Mucus's Diet and uh, you know some, some other stuff that you can look into if you are interested in any of that. But, uh, but yeah. Awesome, dude. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on here. And I like to think sometime in the future we'll I'll, I'll get you back on and we can continue this conversation because I think it's a, a powerful conversation that more and more people will benefit from hearing. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Would love to come back on and yeah, look forward to it. Cheers, brother. All right, peace, love, and breath.